I want to go back to something yeah. I asked you to define love, and I'm going to define it my, on my terms now, Please. and that is the best in me serving the best in you. And I think that's the deepest pleasure. That's the deepest and most lasting pleasure, and it is the most fundamental, fundamental motivation. It's the inexhaustible source, because if I can do that, whenever I do that, I feel that I'm being properly. Well, and there's nothing better than that. And you can extend that to you can extend that to 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 the world, to uh, situations, places. Well, I think that's what you're supposed to do by accepting the proposition that God is love. Mm. I mean, it's mm. God is love and God is logos. Those are those are both there. So then the question to some degree is the rank order of the two. And I would say God is truth within love. And that's the animating spirit of mankind. And that's a way different claim than the one the atheists are going after, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> think I, about I, I, it, everyone. <laughs> is, truth, is truth in the service of love not the best animating spirit of mankind when it isn't pursuing an aberration? We can all ask ourselves that question. I think that's a, a, a good question to ask. Uh, I think, <laughs> Thank well, you, John. No, what I mean is I think it, it re... I think it reorients us to the We can fact. put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> is is truth in the service of love a good question? <laughs> I, I, I guess I, I see them as more. I uh, I see them as more interpenetrating. I, I want to make a stronger relationship between them than just a relationship of service. Um, I mean, this how about her man? Yeah, that uh, that this is why I, I like the term realization. That love is a way of of affording realization, and that, and the deepest knowing yes. you have of reality is in realization. That's what I if I had to okay. Put it so into a well, word. so it seems to me okay. So I'll make I'll make an appendage to my claim. Right. The reality that is most justifiable is brought about by the action of truth in the service of love. Yeah, but I, I guess what I'm saying is I see truth. I, I think you're using it, and I've heard you use true as something beyond a, a, a correspondence between the semantic content of a proposition reality. I've heard you talk about yes. right, right, and we even use that when we when we use the phrase. Yes, true it seems love. to incorporate some of those other dimensions that exactly, you've been talking about. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Well, great, man. So fill me in. Well, that's what I'm trying to get at. I'm trying to get at that power is a way of you know when 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 your shot is true. Your skill has been effective, and and, and you're going to hit the mark, right? But 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 presence is also a way in which things are are true to form, right? And and, and then the the participatory knowing is when we're like the the deepest sense of true, which is you know related to trust and and being betrothed to to the world in an important way. The, so if you will allow me to expand what you mean by true to cover all of those dimensions. Betrothed to the world in that you extend the same courtesy to the world that you described extending to your partner. Exactly. I think the, the answer to nihilism isn't some propositional answer. This is what I get from Nisha Tan. Yeah, right. It's, it's to relearn, and I mean this deeply, like in, the, in the Buddhist sense of sati, to remember what it is to fall in love with reality, to fall in love with being. And if that's what you're saying is the thing. You think that's thing. what Sam Harris is striving for in his spirituality? <laughs> well, I'm, and, and it's not a it's not a throwaway answer. It's like what's he up to exactly? I mean, I... he's on a he's he's he isn't he on a Sophia um a I think... Philia Sophia adventure? I think Everybody is, uh, how can I put this? Everybody lives from the, the, the non-propositional kinds of knowing emphasized by Plato. And that's what all of the scholastic research is pointing to now, that P Socrates was trying to point people to the non-propositional knowing, the procedural, the, the perspectival, the participatory. I think we all have to live from that, given a lot of things I've said and a lot of things we've said. Well, you should, maybe you could, you could expound on those a bit more for us and clarify a bit more and... and so you said the answer to nihilism, that isn't, that isn't exactly a comment on my comment that the culture war is about a claim that the drive to power is at the core of Western being. I think that's an equally nihilistic claim. I, uh, that's, that's my, my point. The claim 
the, the, the claim is nihilistic or my claim about that is nihilistic the claim or both? That, that power is a fundamental reality is an attempt to assuage the wounding of nihilism, but it is fundamentally mistaken in its endeavor. It will, it is, it is, it is constituted the wrong way. It's like framing a problem the wrong way so that yeah. you, you know, do not get the insight needed to get to the, to the solution of the problem. I, so I think of it as a fundamental uh -huh. misframing. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, and that's okay, why, okay. and that's why I'm not, I'm, that's why I'm hesitant to say either yes or no to it because I'm right, I, say, I get it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I believe that, I believe that it is misframed because I don't think it would be taking us in such a pathological direction. The whole argument, exactly. if it wasn't misframed. And so part of what I'm, I'm trying to, and, and, and for me, this dovetails with the, you know, the, the, the increasing crescendo within 4E cognitive science about embodiment and embedded and extended and enacted cognition is most right. of the, You see this as a subset argument of one of those elements. Yes. But yes. I mean, that's a huge, but I'm, like I said, I'm really having a hard time. I know what you mean, but, and I suppose what you're trying to do with everything you do is to expound upon this, but I certainly want you to expound upon this. Let's go into those th three modes of alternate cognition a little bit more deeply. Okay. So, I mean, so the, the first distinction, of course, is, was classically made by Ryle. And, and we even carry it in, in psychology when we make distinctions of our own procedural memory and things like that, which this is the distinction between propositional, knowing that something is the case, in which what you're trying to do is basically assert, you know, the truth of the semantic content of a Right, and that's, that's akin to the proposition that to believe in God is to accept a set of propositions exactly, about the nature exactly. of God. Yes, and that's what always strikes, that's why I never answer that question, yes. because I think that's the wrong framing of the exactly. question, so I can't answer it. Exactly. Okay, well, man, man you're helping me out here, so, <laughs> because you're differentiating, you're helping me differentiate my sense of the non-propositional space. And I mean, I know some of this because I know that the knowing what and knowing how circuitry is separate. Yep. I've and, known and, that since I wrote Maps of Meaning and I know the insight circuitry is separate. And, and you know, that's what I've been getting at also with regards to this idea of revelation and then critical thinking, which we started all this with and never got <laughs> back to, even though it's just a trivial issue. We're following issue. the logos. We're following yeah, the God, logos in love. Oh God, I hope so. Yep. I yep. hope so, John, because it's certainly the only justification for my existence, Red Skull and all. I think there are many reasons that justify your existence, my friend.